Daisy. How is everyone? It's uh, 7.15 in the morning here, so I'm whispering, although I'm not sure why, because depending on where you are, it doesn't really matter. I look really tired, because I am. Anyway, enough of the whispering. So the reason I'm here is um, I'm about to take you guys on a bit of a mission to um, a what's left of the deceased estate sale where 7,000 records or 8,000 in total went out from a collection. I've mentioned this previous, previously, very briefly, um, where I scored some killer gems uh, last time around. So the last lot of it is meant to be garage and punk and some new wave. So uh, I'm going to head out there and see what I can find. Um, yeah, we're going to grab a coffee beforehand and then get on, on the bus around the scenic bay. The weather's not too nice though. And um, yeah, we'll go have a dig and see what I found. Ho hopefully it's not too crazy like last time. But yeah, I'll show you some of this stuff. I'm just going to grab a random stack of things I pulled out last time. Um, just to give you an idea. This is just honestly a completely random five. You know, I've picked up a full record. Crystal Voyager soundtrack, Mud Honey, a Ravi Shankar, uh, a Ziggy Stardust, and an original uh, Miles Davis. So, you know, it's, it's quite a varied collection, so yeah, a, quite a bit of junk and a lot of awesome stuff. So yeah, we're gonna hit the road, be, grab my coffee, and then I'll grab a second coffee, and then yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get to it. <laughs> So I ended up getting into town a bit earlier than expected. So the coffee shop, which is in the old theatre, well, the current theatre, um, doesn't open for another 12 minutes. So I thought I'd kill some time by telling you guys this, even though it's not really that important. <laughs> 17 seconds wasted. Okay, so I've just hopped off the bus. Um, we're now in Lower Hut, spell H-U-T-T. -T. Yes, like uh, Jabba the Hut from Star Wars, spelled exactly the same way. So yeah, I'm now in, in Lower Hut, which is um, north of Wellington itself, uh, just around the bay. Uh, it's mainly sort of an industrial area around here. It's not um, particularly scenic, uh, just to prove that all of New Zealand isn't uh, you know, rolling hills and greenery. There's still car yards and Burger Kings and McDonald's and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this place is in yeah quite an industrial area. Um, yeah, lots of weird factories and stuff like that. Uh, I'm a bit early, but hey, the early bird gets the worm and all that. So yeah, I'll probably probably get there a bit early and listen to some music or read a book while I wait. And fingers crossed we uh, come up with the goods. Yeah, see? Not particularly the uh, most beautiful thing in the world. <laughs> they, they, got, they got very 80s in the 80s, didn't they? Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool.
just basically about to head home now. Um, I might grab some lunch on the way home, I think. Um, yeah, that, that went um, pretty well. It was very busy, I saw by the footage. I sort of didn't, I was planning on filming some stuff as I got in there, but I just saw how chaotic it was and there was people going crazy in the crates. I thought I'd better dig first and uh, film later. So I got some stuff. I mean, what you saw in the crates at the end was like the average stuff that had been picked over. Um, but yeah, it, it did pretty well. Um, to get an original um, Black Sabbath of Paranoid, like an original Vertigo Swirl, um, for a really cheap price was amazing. I already have a copy, but it's really s sort of beat up and scratched, so that was definitely worth it. But yeah, there you go, really happy with that. Nice little morning. Yeah, I'm hoping to get some proper footage of the, the uh, bus ride out, because it's usually really stunning and beautiful, and you see the hills and the, the really clear water, but it was so gray, and I couldn't really get a seat closer to the window, so yeah, that didn't really work out as planned. But yeah, heading home, grab some lunch, and I'll uh, show you what I picked up. See you soon. Mission accomplished. Except, uh, you probably can't see it, but they're green and purple for dumplings, which I did not expect. Anyway, that's it. All right, been back home for the afternoon, listened to what I picked up, and I thought I'd show you, show you what I got. Um, so I'll, what I'll do is I'll show you what I picked up, and I might also show you a few other things I got the last time I was there. And then I've also got a whole stack of stuff I got the first other the three times I went to pick up stuff from there, um, and later on in another video. But yeah, this is what I got today. This is what I'm most excited about at the moment. So I thought I'd get that on, and it would all fit in this video. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. Everything came out in relatively good condition. Um, you'll see why I say relative later on in a few records time but yeah this is uh, the first one I'm really happy to be picking up um, Chairs Missing by Wire this is their second uh, record from 1978 um, obviously the first one being Pink Flag uh, which is a masterpiece a record I don't have and is getting very pricey uh, very quickly um, and I know that I've passed over it a couple of times you know three or four years ago for re you know, reasonable prices. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, this is their second second record, the big hit. I would say that is the double hit of uh, Outdoor Miner and I Am The Fly. Yeah, uh, just that, that wire sound, it, it's, it's killer. I'm really happy to get this. I've been wanting it for uh, a long time. This is a uh, New Zealand pressing uh, in really great shape on the uh, Harvest label. Yeah, excellent, excellent post-punk. Um, I mean, next up, we'll go this one, is um, something that I got for a measly $5, which I'm out over the moon with. This is a record that I had been looking for for, yeah, maybe even since I joined the vinyl community, you know, we started making videos about six years ago um, and I've just never seen it um, and I've never bought it online for whatever reason this is uh, A.R. Kane's first record um, called 69 came out in 1990 sorry 1989 that's so I mean when you listen when you hear this record 1989 it's it's amazing I mean so anyway uh, A.R. Kane they Basically, at this point, had a hit with Pump Up the Volume under the name Mars, M-A-R-S. This is their debut album, and it's uh, credited as being the first ever Dream Pop album, or at least the term Dream Pop was coined to describe this record. Um, it, it, it's it's really cool. I mean, it sits at the cornerstone of, like, shoegaze music, uh, bits of, like, almost bits of, like, dub experimental spacious things everything does move in a dreamlike way like things phase in things phase out um 
it has this really weird fragmented um, theme. Like it sort of goes through phases where things start to break down and come back together again. And it's very open, very experimental. It's just an a absolute melting pot, you know, hints of dance music at the time and yeah, shoegaze music. And it's just that really, <laughs> that's, it's, it, for me, it's a cornerstone record. I mean, when I heard this, it was like a, a missing link between, yeah, shoegaze and dance music. ARK and use guitars, dub effects, and studio technology creating a wall of music that's a soundtrack to um, many different dreams, esoteric, rarefied, and indulgent. A bit, a bit of a, a douchebag uh, description, but yeah, it's 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 wonderful. Um, and on the same note, I got something that I've been also it's dirt cheap, but I've never seen it, and it's you would they you know the prices are like two or three dollars online. Um, so it's not really worth buying online for shipping to get it here. Um, this is Mars Pump Up the Volume, which obviously was a big club hit in the uh, 90s. But the reason I bought this is um, obviously Mars and two guys from ARK I just mentioned. But the B side, it's actually a double A side, but the B side called uh, Antina, the first time I see She Dance, is amazing. Like it's That's, that's why I bought this for that second track. Um, blows my mind. I mean... It's like a, it's like a, it just has this big dance, sounds like, you know, big club sound mixed with these shoegaze guitars with like post-punk bass playing. It just, yeah, it just sits in that sound, you know, I guess when electronic music and rock music could, was starting to melt and at the time, it's just, yeah, I really love that track. Pump up the volume, I've heard, you know, a lot before, it doesn't do much for me, but yeah, the, the, this track on here, you can get it. Look, check it out on YouTube. I might put a post a link because it it just kills me. Yeah, it's just it's just killer. So I got got that as well. Super cheap. Um. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, this is the Cramps Psychedelic Jungle. Uh, I hadn't heard this record. I I'm only familiar with um, Smell of Female, and uh, this was a really really good price. So I thought I would give it a shot. Um, obviously featuring Kid Con Congo Powers, it does have it does it does sound like the Bad Seeds doing uh, like surf rock. <laughs> uh, yeah, that that's probably my description. But I mean, you know the Cramps. Lots of people know the Cramps. Um, just 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 an artist that yeah I need to check out more of. And uh, yeah, this is a uh, a a magnificent record that you all know. It's just uh, I when I pick I picked this up today. And I hadn't heard this record. I know stuff, you know, like everyone knows Into the Void, like the back of their hand, but I haven't heard it on vinyl and I hadn't heard it properly in years, like close to 10 years. So uh, when I sat down this today, I was just, yeah, blown away. I was cleaning the house and doing air guitar. Um, just, yeah, absolutely the template for that stoner rock sound that we all know, you know, Caius and Sleep, you know, it all comes back to this this record. This is uh, Black Sabbath. I think they had tuned down, um, and that and they created that sound. This is a lot heavier, um, but yeah, it, the template for, for stoner rock really. Um, where it all goes back to where it all began. I did pick up an upgrade copy of Paranoid because my one's uh, really trash. This is an, again an original New Zealand pressing. Um, got the it's like a flip back sleeve. Do I need to show you the label? I know everyone loves a Vertigo Swirl, but yeah. Ah, oh, the first side of this is magnificent. Ah, oh, yeah, Warpix, Paranoid, Planet Caravan, Iron Man. To me, that's the perfect first side of an album. Um, that's, you know, I don't know. It just the whimsicalness of Iron Man, that whole like heavy, stoner, thick, Planet Caravan sound. It just when I hear it, it just sounds like being in like a hot box, high, drugged out, or in like a really hot jungle forest or something. And it just sounds so thick. It's so great. It's, it's so great. Um, yeah, those two. Another one that I've got a a copy of, but um, I have a reissue of this by a label called I think Simply Vinyl or Vinyl Lovers, and they're based out of uh, like Serbia. And it's basically just a CD pressed to vinyl, so it was cool to get um, an original pressing with the insert on um, 
the Stun uh, New Zealand label. I've shown, well, I've shown this before plenty of times, but look at that for a cool label. Um, so again, you know, I can sell that reissue that I have and make back and some more what I paid for this one, which is great. Um, all right, getting onto some later stuff as well now. Um, this was a massive uh, one list item for me. This is the Fall, Fall in a Hole. Um, so it's a 2LP set uh, recorded in, in New Zealand, um, put out by Flying Nun. Basically, uh, the Fall, this was recorded very early in the, in the Fall's career, 1983. So some people would say this was like at the peak of their, their you know, the music. I mean, I'm pretty sure Hex Induction Hour had just come out, but it could be wrong. Um, but it's it's like a live best of. I mean, you've got like Hit Priest, Room to Live, Large Room of Casino, Soul, The Classical, Hard Life in the Country. Uh, you know, all my favorite full tracks are on here in a live setting. Um, and it's a Flying Nun record put out by a, a, a English artist, which is kind of weird. So the Fall, fall came here and uh, they they played this show and it, and it was massively influential to New Zealand. Lots of people fell in love with the fall. Um, you know, I mean, the people, the flying nun stuff, you know, was so indebted to the fall sound. Basically, sort of, Marky e. Smith half agreed to putting this out after a few drinks or whatever. Um, you know, it was a, he said it was okay they could record it and put it out locally, but. Flying Nun got this pressed up and they started selling selling in large quantities and copies ended up making it overseas. And um, Marky e. Smith heard this in, he was in England and he heard it, heard, I think he heard like a, about it in Germany that it was going around and he listened to it and he hated it. And he told them that they had basically a cease and desist order, get rid of this, I don't want to see it around, it's not an official full record, um, you know, stop making these, destroy all your copies, blah, 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 blah. So... They're very hard to find because they're, yeah, they, they're not officially sanctioned, I guess, as far as I know, by the fall. But, um, yeah, it, it's it it's great. It's really great because it captures the fall at their peak in a live setting. And if you've seen the fall live, for me, when when I saw the fall live, they really clicked for me. I mean, I liked them sort of, and I appreciated them sort of, and all the songs sound the same. And when I just saw their playing live it just all made sense and now i can't get enough you know i always say i haven't got enough full records but at the same time i've got too many full records um but yeah ch check this out um not cheap but i got it at a really reasonable price and it comes with all the inserts i might show them quickly um da -da -da. Yeah, it comes with these. So it's yeah, two LPs. One's a forty-five, and one's thirty-three. Here's a little brochure. All the other bands you should check out on the Flying Nun label. We got the Clean, Tall Dwarfs, the Chills, Children's Hour, the Builders are all in here. And then this is a little insert that came out around the time. There he is, Marky e. Smith, and it's a press release from the time they came out here, and an interview with uh, Marky e. Smith. Because I mean, at the time for the for this. For the fall in the 80s to come out to New Zealand was obviously huge. Like, I mean, I imagine people would have been over the moon to see them coming out here at that time. It's, you know, it was amazing. Anyway, all right, let's get into some more away from punk. Um, this is a record that I dismissed for 20, you know, 15 years. Ne never heard it. Um, I know some people, especially Fred, is a massive advocate for this record. Um, I don't need to say on Paul McCartney, but I think this is really brilliant. I'm smiling because I never thought I'd be showing a Paul McCartney record on my channel a year ago. Um, this is a Japanese pressing I got really cheap. Uh, under, I got it for $4. <laughs> and... I, I know F Fred has said this is great, and I took his advice, and I'm I'm really I really like it. It's it took I mean the first time I heard it, I really like the track coming up is is amazing. It's like that Afro beat. It's like a basically you know that that Afro beat sound 
ended up getting quite big in the um you know started in, in world music and all, all the beginnings of that in the early 80s and the, this that coming up the guitar track it just reminds me of like that afrobeat sound you know it's a really big sign of things to come and uh temporary secretary has a like a new wave electronic sound um you know that sort of stuff was obviously going to be big in the 80s i don't know it's so weird it's kind of shit and it's kind of awesome <laughs> I wish I could do it justice. Like, I almost feel like he's taking the piss because towards the end of side two, there's a track called Bogey Music and Dark Room, and they're not very good at all. And then the last track, he just switches to complete stripped down Paul McCartney's ballad, and it just takes your breath away. Um, it's it's like a reward for getting to the end of the album or something. But yeah, I, I do really like this. It's kind of wacky. It's kind of strange. It's very mis mismatched. I can see how it could divide a lot of people. Uh, I really like it. Um, yeah, I've listened to it a lot. And and I, I keep getting drawn back to it. Like, the first time I heard it, I was like, eh, Coming Up is really cool. I mean, I think that track got to number one in the US. Uh, and that's the, on the strength I bought that. And then the rest of it, I was like, nah. But then there was something in it that, that, that got back. You know, like, I started humming Waterfalls to myself, the track, and I just ended up coming back to it more and more. And, and now I love it. This is really great. Uh, Paul McCartney too. Yes. Um, okay. This is one that I was really happy to get. Uh, this is the Grateful Dead, Steal Your Face. I remember when I first started buying records and I was about 17 or 18. Probably, I think I would have been about 18. Or at least starting to look at records and stores. Um, I saw this cover and I was like, I didn't know what the Grateful Dead were. I saw this and I was like, what is this? Um, and I remember it was quite expensive for me at the time. And I put it back and the cover was always stuck in my mind. Um, and then for whatever reason, I just have never got around to, you know, checking out the album. Um, absolutely iconic album out there. Anyway, I found this uh, cheap at, at the market and, and I took a punt on it. Uh, according to the internet, this is not the greatest I enjoy this record. I, re I I do enjoy this record, but I get why it's not the greatest. I mean, it almost sounds like... Like, you take a, a Grateful Dead record, and they seem to... It, all, all the songs flow, especially the live ones, they've all, at least the live recordings, they all flow really well. And then they sort of have these peaks, and, and it blows you away, and then it sort of... There's these bits in between that sort of flow and move, and then they build up into the next track or the next piece. And these sound like those middle sections in between with lyrics like they don't peak or trough or they don't really break down that much they're just pleasant and it's really nice it's, it's a nice nice record the recording's a bit weird because it's live um and it's two lps and it doesn't really have any pace or tempo do you know i don't know i don't know like i'm not one to be i know with dead heads they just get very defending and they're very passionate about the Grateful Dead, so I'm not the best person to talk to about it, but it's nice. It's nice. It's not a uh, exemplary Grateful Dead record. It's not one that I would recommend for people to start with, but I really enjoyed it. I'm really glad I picked it up. All right, two by the same artist that I got really cheap. Um, Goodbye from LA. This is like a white boy funk record. Uh, it's like just white people doing uh, funk music with cocaine and it sounds like the cover greetings from LA it sounds like Californian hot parties in the 70s sleazy men just terrible lyrics move with me get on top sweet surrender devil eyes I mean there's some really groovy tracks on here and it's very white um, I, I do like this the first time I heard it I, I was like because eh, I was expecting a folk record obviously um because i mean this is not even his debut or anything it's quite later on i think he'd done folk records previous to this previous to this so i was really surprised to hear that this is it's like yeah funk rock sort of thing but yeah it's grown on me i really like it so tim buckley good greetings from la the next one is goodbye and hello which i used to have a music and vinyl pressing of this and uh, I now have a, an original pressing. Uh, yeah, this is wonderful. This is that gorgeous uh, folk vein on the... Look at that. Isn't that labelled beautiful? 
I really like this Electra label. I don't have much on it, but um, yeah, another one I got. I got really cheap. Um, I do know this one really well. I never asked you to be a mountain. Pleasant Street. Uh, two of my highlights. No Man Can Find the Wall. I've talked about this record a long time ago in a video when I picked up the reissue. Would have been years ago. But yeah, that's that's where I'm at. Um, that's just some of the stuff. We've got lots to get through. But I've been talking for 21 minutes. So we'll end it there. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the footage before this. Thanks for subscribing. And I'll see you all shortly. Cheers, VC. Bye.